What's up everybody? I'm gonna be covering the updates for cracks. This is gonna be cracks v3. I'm gonna show you two new types of cracks we have. One is gonna be the v2, which is this, and the second one is going to be the traditional cracks, as you can see here, with some better controls. And we're gonna go over a cool selection tool that will just allow you to automatically see what the object is, select it, and then it doesn't matter how many objects that you select in the scene, you just iterate them through, or you can just grab, say, a couple, and then have those selected. Let's jump right in. Welcome, everybody. This is Cracks Demo. This is a demo for V3. This is version 3, and there's also a reworked version 2. I got rid of the old version because, effectively, the entire file I had for that crashed. So it just rebuilt everything, made it run, like, I don't know, 500 times faster or something like that. It's a crazy number. Anyways, I don't really know. I just know it's running stupid fast now. So we'll start off with Cracked V3 because it is technically the one you know. So boom, it adds cracks. Shift left arrow brings you to frame one. This is because it is simulation backed. You will not be able to see any changes unless you are on frame one. Now, certain mesh objects will have a piece disappear once you get to a certain threshold. That's okay because you can individually crack these once you have applied the modifier and then separated by loose parts. Now there's a few changes. The loose parts um, operation is here now. So you'll start off like this. It'll just say, hey, add cracks or first select an object. That would mean, hey, there's if there's an object in your scene that has the modifier on it. Otherwise, it's not going to show any of these properties, so we don't get any funky errors. So if you, cr you click on Cracks 2, you get this. You're on frame 1. And let's just say you like this setup right here. You don't even always have to bake the simulation. It's kind of up to you. It's a lot smoother, and you will get better cracks. But you could just apply the cracks. And then once you come up here and click Loose Parts and Collection, it's going to automatically create a folder called Loose Parts. It's going to throw everything in that selection into the folder. And it's going to reset the origin for each one of these objects that was separated, because now they're all separate loose parts. Now, I'm also working with somebody that purchased the add-on and had a few needs for their workflow. Uh, one of them was the loose part and separate by selection, but there was a bigger need, and that is controlling the cracks and having the ability to crack individual pieces more easily. So now all you have to do is select your individual piece that you want to crack. Press V3. Now I'll see that nice little hairline crack there. Now you have a couple of options. You can change the crack type. This is a Voronoi projection, and the other one is going to be a basic noise projection. So we'll actually use the Voronoi for this one. And then I want to bring the cursor somewhere in here. It doesn't matter. Somewhere to the center of your object would be nice. And drop in and empty planes access. Just scale it up so I can see it. Apply the scale. And I want to grab this because I can now translate and rotate the cracks with the empty. So once you grab this, make sure you're on frame one you'll be able to kind of move your cracks around. And if it disappears, it's just it's just a funky overlap with the bullion because we all know that bullions and stuff, they're kind of un unpredictable sometimes. And if you like the crack there, then you could rotate it a little bit. Maybe something like right close to the edge. and see, what axis am I on? I think Y. So if I go on the Y axis, you can kind of move that around a little bit. And you'll see its, tra its translation is connected to that object input right here inside of the geometry nodes and inside of the add-on. So you have that access. And you kind of move that around. It gives you a little bit better control. And then you can move this up and add more cracks. And so that's cracked up a lot. I like that. So we come here. And we can go ahead and apply those cracks. And this is also going to separate them and drop them into the loose parts. And so now we've got all of these pieces collected. So 
if you had a whole bunch of different folders, I just, I don't think that would work out good. If someone has a need for that, then let me know. Now, as far as the size of the cracks, you may be wondering why they are so big. That is just being set to 0 0.05. There's an offset, you can fix that. So we'll just add cracks one more time, then we'll go to V2 and check that out. So now we've got uh, this set up. There's a little crack right here. We'll just use that one. And when you're on frame one, and that crack will move, uh, what you can do is do the crack offset. So it's a 0 0.05. Try 0 0.04. It'll bring it a little closer. 0 0.03, a little closer. 0 0.02, 0 0.01. And that's a very, very fine line crack. So if you need it smaller, that is how you do it. And then it's just a game because it's simulation. Uh, the add-on is going to help you achieve results, but it's you're going to have to figure out, hey, what's my threshold for what I'm doing? Uh, what offset do I want? You know, I want to move my cracks around. Do I want to try to fool around with this and locate them like that? And you have to do that from frame one. Uh, do I want to try to move my cracks around? Because you can. And as you see how much faster that is, that's the 500% increase, if you will, because you could not have done that before, period. So that's crazy, and I'm really happy about it. Just a rework of the geometry nodes, the add-on. I, I moved everything to Blender 4.0, and just a whole new line of code for everything. Anyways, that's all that we got for that. Uh, you can kind of check out this. I got it set to ambient occlusion. It does look kind of nice here on Eevee. Just got some basic lights and I've got some other stuff set up over here because we're going to go over a new tool that is in here. I have not released this in any of my other add-ons yet, but you guys will get this if you have cracks and I'll have this uploaded. Uh, as soon as you see this tutorial, it will be uploaded. All right. So now this one's going to be more experimental, but I think you can find a use case for it. It's going to come with textures. Because otherwise you will not be able to work with it. You'll have to have the textures on here. So if we cl click on Cracked V2, this is going to pop up with a Voronoi texture on it. It's set up with proximity and distance to edge. And so if we go into our selection here, and our, excuse me, if we go into Eevee and do a material preview, you can see what this is. This is another form of Cracked. So I'm just kind of working on it. I think it's kind of nice. It gives a, a nice wrap. Now this is going to work as far as I experimented on every type of mesh. The uh, problem comes in and there's no specific settings and eventually I'll add some presets, but I don't know what you guys are going to have your scale set to and all of that stuff. So uh, what we can do is just go ahead and add a V2 to this as well. And you'll see it kind of comes up a little different for the sphere and there'll be settings in here. Like you've got a W factor, you can kind of move it around. You know what the W factor is. It's almost like a seed value for animation. Uh, you'll have a scale elements here. 0.98 works pretty much for everything you bring into the viewport. And if you go over that, it's going to make a big glob on the outside. And the smaller you go, it will kind of shrink out of existence. Uh, you'll have the Voronoi scale here, and this, like, as you're working with this, some of this may or may not produce a whole lot of change. It's not designed to change a whole lot because the, the parameters and the float values and the integers are so small. It's like 0.1 to 0.189 or something like that. On some of these, I had to set them that way, otherwise it wouldn't even work. And it's locked into the add-on, so you can't actually change some of these uh, without that. And there is no control for that just yet for the V2. You just come over here if you uh, want to change something. I will add controls to it later. Uh, the background is going to work. And it's, it's kind of hard. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. If you throw a different style of mesh in here that's not, say, flat like the Suzanne, uh, that's where you would use it. And I'll just throw the monkey head in. How dare we call her a monkey head? Okay, so throw a V2 on this, and it gives you this kind of neat, kind of crusty overlay texture. It's kind of cool. And like I said, you can play with the background on that. I would just keep the background at zero 
more or less, uh, but you can mess around with it a little bit. And then the resolution, if you have that too low, like 10, and it just puts little globs on there. It doesn't look all that great, but you can kind of mess around with that. So the resolution is going to be uh, a big deal on how that shows up, but it's kind of neat. It gives it like a splatter effect. And then this value right here, you'll be able to uh, blob it up pretty good, disintegrate it, and it should adhere exactly to any surface that you have it on. And then there's a shade smooth operation, which is needed. So I have it set to on. And then you've got a subdivision level, which is going to look good. So obviously by the time you're done, you do all that. And then you've got the materials, uh, the material settings, and then of course the scale elements. And then there's some randomness. And that's not necessarily going to work too much when you have this value up. So if you turn this down, maybe you get just a little bit of variation, but not much. And that is V2. I really like it on flat surfaces. It's pretty cool. Now you'll also have Alt Y, and let me just pull this up so we're more organized. Underneath the Cracks v V3, you'll have Pi Menu. You will have a key map for that, so you can change it. And this is going to be an Origin Pi. So Alt Y will pull that up. You'll get all your stuff. Plus you can switch Median and Bounds, and it will remember where it was. So it's all preset. It'll set everything for you. Now you have an X-ray menu, which is Alt F, which is really cool. So if you hit Alt F inside the 3D viewport, it's going to switch you into X-ray mode. So we can check that out. I'm going to come over here and we'll just be able to see. Hit Alt F, X-ray, and it's a modal. Okay, so you can kind of move everything around. And when you're done looking through the mesh, you just right click and it's gone. So it's a mouse modal. You don't have to play around with it. You don't have to like search for it or anything like that. Um, now you can change those key maps, by the way. Just you just click on this, and if you wanted Alt U or just U or Alt U, you just hold those down and put it in there. So I'm gonna stick with Alt Y because there's a lot of key maps out there. So you can change them inside of the preferences. Now here's the good one. This is the tool I've been waiting to show you guys. It is a new selection tool menu, and you just press Y. You can change that as well to whatever key works best for you. Now it's a very powerful tool. You just hit Y and you can just scroll through everything. And as you can see, this works wonderful. And you can just right click and make whatever you want the active object. Now it does have one little Achilles heel as far as I found. And that is when you go to select something that has an active geometry nodes group. Like all oh, this is good, you're great. And as soon as you get to something with that, it's locked up and it doesn't work. So something with an active geo nodes group is not going to work. I'll fix that eventually, but until then, all your other objects, it's just going to be very easy to select them. And there you go. And as a final thought, I did add all of the buttons that are necessary, plus the materials, so you can go in and change those materials live on the add-on and make them any color you want. Just reverse these, put the orange on the other side. There we go. So appreciate everybody watching. If you got the add-on, go upgrade it. It'll be on Blender Market. If you don't have the add-on, go ahead and pick it up. There'll be a link in the description and in the comments. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one.